All right, last one of these. That one was 3.2E, right? Some years I go to all the way to G, but this year we're only going to F. So, so add a page, 3.2F, which hopefully none of your grades end up being. All right. So, let's take an example here. Let's say we have cosine of x over um, cosine of x plus 1 equals secant of x minus 1 over tangent squared of x. Okay. See how there's addition in the bottom of this? Okay. No addition or subtraction here. No addition or subtraction in the bottom. Subtraction in the top. What we got going on here is I need some subtraction in the top. To get subtraction in the top, I need to multiply top and bottom by the conjugate of the denominator. Okay? Is that going to be the way it is every single time? No. Here, yes. So I'm going to be thinking conjugates today a little bit. Okay? So, thinking conjugates. This is where I want to be. Thinking conjugates. What is the conjugate of cosine of x plus 1? Cosine of x minus 1. So what do we have? Oops. So what do we have? Will we get cosine squared of x minus cosine of x up here? And I get cosine squared of x, outers and inners are going to cancel, minus 1. All right, so we got subtraction on the top. I got subtraction on the bottom. I don't want subtraction on the bottom. Any way that we can get rid of that subtraction problem if I got cosine squared of x minus 1, what would that be? Sine squared? Negative sine squared. There we go. So, I have cosine squared here. You know what? I distributed. Maybe I shouldn't have distributed. Maybe let's just leave it at like this. All right. So, now, to be tangent squared on the bottom, to be tangent squared on the bottom, ooh, 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 you know what? I didn't think I had far enough. I was good with where I was at. Okay, sorry about that. Don't get mad, Remington. It's all right. I can make mistakes. I didn't get a lot of sleep last night. So, you know, I make mistakes. All right. And you're going, where's Mr. Bierschbach going with this? Well, I want tangent squared on the bottom, right? Tangent squared is sine squared over cosine squared, right? Secant is 1 over cosine. So I want to be dividing by cosine. So actually, I want to divide by cosine squared. So I'm going to do this. And this is, looks like we haven't done this before. I'm going to multiply by 1 over cosine squared on top and bottom. So what that does on the top is puts cosine squared x over cosine squared of x minus cosine of x over cosine squared of x over negative sine squared of x over cosine squared of x. And Chuck goes, hey, 
I know exactly where Bebop is going here. Because I know, because Chuck says in his mind, I know that cosine squared over cosine squared equals... One, thanks, Chuck. Minus. If we cancel a cosine here with one of these, I get one over cosine of x, right? And I get negative tangent squared on the bottom. Now, my one should be negative. My secant should be positive, and this is secant, right? And my tangent should be positive. So what do I have to do on the top and bottom? Multiply by a negative 1. So if I multiply by negative 1, I can change my cosine into secant of x minus 1 over tangent squared of x. Oh, Okay, so there we go. That one, you know, we're going to, because I'm only giving you like, oh, three problems, some of them are a little bit more complicated. Okay, let's do another one. Okay, so let's do... This John Lemke, how are you doing today, buddy? Good. Good. How should we start this problem, do you think? Uh, to, uh, to what? In what? To uh, of X and sine of X over of X. I'm good with that. Now, I've had other people do it a different way, but I'm good with that. Okay, it's a complex fraction, right? I don't like complex fractions. How can I get rid of my complex fraction? Well, what's my denominator of my denominator? Cosine of x. So if I multiply this by cosine of x, this by cosine of x, and this by cosine of x, I'm multiplying by cosine over cosine, which is 1. So these cancel, these cancel, and I get... Cosine of x over 1 minus sine of x equals 1 plus sine of x over cosine of x. Good start, John. Good job. All right. We got a minus sign here. We got a plus sign up here. What's the magic word, Lindsay King? Starts with a C. C O N. C O N J. Conjugate. Way to get that right off the top of your head. Okay, so we got to multiply by a conjugate. What's conjugate here? 1 plus the sine of x. So we get cosine of x times 1 plus sine of x. And notice how I'm not distributing on this one. Because this one is 1 plus sine of x. It matches this. Yeah, I don't want to distribute. Because that, then I'll just have to undistribute later. Over 1. 1 times 1 is 1. Opposites, outsides. 
sine of x. Insides, negative sine of x. They cancel. Minus sine squared of x. What's 1 minus sine squared? Cosine squared of x. And this cosine and one of these cosines cancel, so I get 1 plus sine of x over cosine of x. Ta-da. Done. Okay, one last problem. Now, in this problem up here, I multiplied both the top and bottom by the conjugate of the denominator. At this step right here, I multiplied both the top and bottom by the conjugate of the denominator. Now, when we have secant of x plus 1, secant of x minus 1 equals 1 plus cosine of x over 1 minus cosine of x. Now, you have a minus here, you have a plus here, and you tell yourself, well, it's just the conjugate I do. No, because we have plus over minus, plus over minus. Don't do the conjugate thing here. Okay? Because we already have a plus sign, a minus sign, a plus sign, a minus sign. Up here, where we started this one, we had a minus sign down here with no plus sign up here, a plus sign up here with no minus sign down here. That's when you do conjugates. Here, no plus or minus sign, a plus sign, a minus sign, no plus or minus. That's when you do conjugates. Something like this, you don't have to mess with conjugates. And actually, this is super simple. What is our first step, Zoe? Absolutely. If you don't know what else to do, change secants, cosecants, tangents, and cotangents into what they are in terms of sines and cosines. Okay? Okay, now look at this. Got a minus sign, got cosines. This is super simple if you see it. If you don't see it, you go, hmm. But if you see it, it's super simple. Now, do I get complex fractions? So what am I going to multiply both my top and bottom by? Cosine of x. If I distribute my cosine of x through here, I get cosine of x over cosine of x plus cosine of x over cosine of x over cosine of x minus cosine of x. which is 1 plus cosine of x over 1 minus cosine of x equals 1 plus cosine of x over 1 minus cosine of x. Now I know what you, some of you are thinking. You say, can I skip this step, Mr. Bierschbach? And I'd like to see that. I'd like to see this instead of magically going from here to here because I don't know if you really know what's going on from there to there. So yes, I'd like to see that step. Okay? So, you have one whopper of an assignment today. We are on page 172. We are doing numbers 56. Are we doing 56? No, 58. Or should we do 56? Mm -hmm. 
They're about the same. Um, that's just a 56. That's fine. 61 and 63. Should really do 56, 58, 61, 63. But I said I will only do three problems today. So we're good with that. 56, 61, 63. Let's call it good. Let's have a good Tuesday today.